Welcome to edition number three of A Closer Look, our look at high school football. I'm Mark Schein. This is Mark Miller. Thank you. Sure, Tribute name? to our former broadcast partners. <laughs> and Mike Shep. Wrote a book this year. Jerry Snodgrass has worked with us, honoring them. You have your Cleveland Browns shirt on. Yeah, yeah. Browns I thought it would be the last time this year I could wear it and they'd be in first place. Browns open up with Washington, no, Philadelphia, Philadelphia. this weekend. Which gives them a chance. Gives them a I mean, chance. They got rid of their quarterback. Your take on the Browns? Dysfunctional. Dysfunctional. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, they're starting over. New players, new coaches, new everything. I wish they'd get a new owner. Yeah. Then, we'd have, then we'd have a real new start. But I'm a Browns fan, but it's going to be a rough year. Good thing about the Browns, you don't have to go into the game expecting them to win. That's right. You can just watch and enjoy. There you go. All right, we're going to take a look at some things that occurred a week ago, go through some games that we talked about, went through in highlights or previews last week. We're going to preview or review them again right now. Mark, go ahead. All right, Grove played at Lipsick. They won 20 to 13. Reed Stecksholder had another good game, this time with his legs, 122 yards rushing, two touchdowns. But hey, from Lipsick, Dylan Schrader, 22 of 36 for 314 passing. Grove at 2-0. They got that good run-pass mix on offense, a solid defense off to a good start this year for Andy Schaefer's crew. Yeah, we saw the defense score a touchdown for him right there. My first game was Coldwater and Jefferson. Hard-hitting affair. Coldwater comes out on top 20-6, and it was a battle. You see a touchdown here by Dylan Toby, one of his touchdown runs. He also had a touchdown pass. It was a battle. Um, Coldwater ends up winning 20-6 over Jefferson and uh, completing a serious sweep. They won a glass year 35-6. Next, we're going to look at Arlington at Ada. Arlington 20, Ada 7. Arlington led in this game 20 to nothing. They held Ada to 137 yards total, but that's not the story. The story is minus 24 yards rushing, some of that on sacks. But this is a big win for Arlington after an opening week shutout against Anna. Might tell you that Anna's pretty good. But Arlington, 1-1, one one, big win. And finally, in our segment here, Marion Local and Macomb. This was a two-point game a year ago. A lot of people thought it would be similar this year, but Marion Local with a 36 to nothing win. They outgained Macomb 416 to 86 in total yards. Complete domination for Coach Goodwin's crew and a great job for them. They win 36-0. We'd also like to look at some individual highlights from a week ago. We're going to just kind of run through some numbers for you. Mark, kind of an unusual yeah. type situation. Yeah. Eric Spicer, Julius Fisher from St. Mary's. Each with 102 yards rushing right on the yeah. nose. And, and didn't they have the same number of carries? Same number of carries. Isn't that amazing? Bit. They defeated yeah. Van Wert 46-6. Yeah. St. Mary's is at Shawnee this week. Aaron Reindell from Delphi uh, St. John's. Big win over LCC. He had 28 carries, 166 yards, and four touchdowns. Big game for Aaron. Back-to-back -back weeks of four touchdowns yeah. for Aaron. Yeah, they off to a great start. did against Bath the week beforehand. Also, we're going to look at Kenton and Trent Heights. Trent, uh, obviously, in that Kenton spread offense situation, threw for three touchdowns, ran for one, 34 of 53, 387 yards. They have a big game this weekend with the Wapak and the Redskins at home. Caleb Martin from Fort Recovery, we talked about him preseason, 32-0 win over Fort uh, Loramie. He passed the ball for over, 100, over 200 yards and a couple of touchdowns, ran the ball for over 100 yards and two more touchdowns. Big game for Caleb Martin as for the rest of the Fort Recovery, they're off to a great start. And in a week, I get Fort Recovery and Coldwater oh, with Kyle Cutton. Now, there's a be couple great. big games back-to-back -back for Coldwater in, mm -hmm. in MAC play. Also, we want to look at what the Finley Trojans did, not individually, but as a group. They played Harrison, defeated Harrison 62-14, five interceptions, ran two of them back for scores, mm -hmm. and also had two fumble recoveries, seven Harrison turnovers. Big offensive game, obviously, but much made much easier by how well their defense played. Spencerville, we're going to look at a group again. The running backs, all three of them, almost three of them over 100 yards. Keaton Lotz, 126, Chris Picker, 107, and Calvin Wilson, just shy of 100 at 98. They had 376 rushing. That is what John Zerby loves to see, that run game, eating up time, eating up yardage. Three guys at 100 yards, right at 100 yards. That's amazing. And, and that's what he loves, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Get, get to the line Share of the wealth. run the play, and let's go yeah. quick, and, and we like to see that out of Coach Zerby. All right, we're going to add something this week to a closer look on something called the bright spot. Hopefully we can find a play, a player, a certain situation every week where we can kind of highlight something. We're going to look at the Van Lu team this week. They broke a 19-game losing streak by defeating Fostoria St. Williams 37-12. They did so because Treg Price rushed for 277 yards, three scores, also two PATs. 
Congratulations to the, to Van Lu and their big win that they had last weekend. Yeah, that, that's awesome. You don't, you know, high school. You don't, the win streaks are fun. Losing streaks, nobody likes to see those. Good for Van Lu getting off that. Yeah, one of the two smallest schools in the states to actually play high school football. Mm -hmm. I think they had like 15 guys on their team. That's a good win mm -hmm. for them. Congratulations to Van Lu. All right. Well, our second segment this evening we like to go through is our question mark segment. Mm -hmm. And this week with the NFL starting on Thursday, and of course moving into games over the weekend, mm -hmm. Mark. Should the NFL stop having preseason football games? Well, a lot of people think so. National and local media, they're saying, why do you have these preseason games? There's a lot of reasons why, and if you haven't been there, you may not understand. So I'm going to try to share some of that. The biggest reason, I think, is determine the rosters and the depth chart. How are you going to figure out who your best players are or who's going to make the team different from last year if you don't put them under pressure? Hitting is not really allowed in practice anymore. You can't risk it with the million dollar salary. So the only way to force them to hit is to have a game. People say, oh, you can have a scrimmage. Yeah, scrimmages are like glorified practices. And I mentioned pressure. Players refer to it as the show. You know, the games are the show. I can remember the veterans, preseason games. It's a game. You're in your uniforms. They're selling tickets. The popcorn's popping. It is the show. And that is pressure that you cannot simulate in practice or scrimmages. And then I hear a lot of people say, well, then at least don't charge the same for ticket prices. They don't. Since 2013, the league has been uh, controlling and lowering ticket prices. Now they are discounted at an average, I didn't know this, 67%. That's a big cut. Mm -hmm. And I know a buddy went to the Minnesota Vikings and he told me what he paid for his ticket, regular season and preseason, much less. So they have adjusted that. They have taken care of that, and again, it is there. We may not like it because you're not seeing the stars play, but it's still a very, very important function of every NFL team, and that is to get your guys ready. Hey, let's take a look at the, the local guys in the NFL. We're talking about the NFL. We still got three of them we talked about last yeah, week. Right. All right. Pugsley, Jared Pugsley from Lima Senior, Akron, Kansas City Chiefs. He got released, but right away they told him, we want you on a practice squad. They have eight linemen on the active roster and two on the practice squad. So I know this, he's going to be activated. I mean, they're going to get dinged, they're going to get hurt, and he'll be ready to play. Good for Jared. Zach Dysart was released by the Dolphins in a battle with a guy from Western Kentucky. Apparently they like Doty better than they like Zach. But Zach was signed by Arizona Cardinals. He's on the practice squad. They got two active quarterbacks and two on the practice squad, which is a little odd. So he's going to have to find his way through Aaron Murray from Georgia. Keith Winning was released by the Bengals the week after they released his main competition. They now have two quarterbacks in the Bengals camp. That's not many. One guy gets hurt on Sunday. They're going to be real nervous down there. But I did notice they only have nine guys on their practice roster. They might be saving that number 10 for a quarterback that they may be signing as we speak. But uh, Keith, still looking for a spot. According to his Twitter feed or whatever, right. great attitude, posting some verses on there. He has the right frame of mind. He'll get a chance, and he'll go do well. Yeah, I really liked what I saw from Keith Winning, what he put on Twitter about his faith in God and where it's going to mm -hmm. take him. The other thing is, I just read this today, practice squad, $6,900 a week. Yeah, it's not a bad gig. I can get on that. that yeah. I, I, yeah. I can take that. I, I, All, right. I, I, All right. All right. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate you, you looking all that up. We're going to do another segment. We're going to add to a closer look. It's kind of a where are they now? We're going to try to find players or coaches or people like that who've been uh, involved in athletics in our area for a while and have moved on to other things. Yeah. This week, my ex next door neighbor, Jerry Cooper from the Columbus Grove, Bath, Lima Central Catholic type thing. Jerry is now at Seymour, Tennessee. His Eagles are 3-0. They've got wins over Sullivan South, Pigeon Ford, Kings Academy. This is their bye week. They actually started a week before high school football did here in Ohio. Ooh. So this is their bye week. And uh, how about this for Coach Cooper? His son, Tyler, is a quarterback. Now he's what you call a game manager. He threw it like four times the first game, nine times the second. They're 3-0. and They're scoring points. They're averaging 34 and a half points a game. Well, could Mark Miller, <laughs> as a head coach, <laughs> coach his son at quarterback? If we're 3-0, and I could. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I think I could coach my son. But I'm not sure I could coach my wife when I'm coaching ah, there, my son. There you go. It yeah. might be harder at home than it would be on the practice field. I coach as an assistant, my oldest son. There's some, that's a tough gig. You yeah. know, we've all seen coaches that yep. coach their sons. Some do it well, some do it poorly. I played for a high school coach that had three sons on the team, and I felt bad for those guys. He was so hard on them. Uh, but, yeah, I think that's really cool. That's something they'll remember the rest of their lives. They're going to bond on Friday nights yeah. and, and maybe – 
after the game, you know, have a little issue, but but good for them. That's fun. I don't I don't know. It's hard. It It'd is hard. hard to do. It is hard to coach your own son. Yeah. When our two daughters were born, I told my wife, that's good because I don't have to worry about coaching them. <laughs> that's right. So yeah. all right, so we go through that. All right. We're gonna take a look. Hey, I got I, before we leave the coaches, we had a couple other guys, oh, yeah, Mike right. Mock, Mike Fell that left. Yes. Update all all right. Right. Uh, Mike Mock is three and and good for him. He's got his cancer issues seem to be behind him right now. Good, good for Mike. And he's 3-0 and right now out there in Glendale in, in Missouri. And Mike Fell's 2-0. and They won their first two games. He's in Arizona, of course, in the Phoenix suburb area. Good for them. Okay. Yeah, we lose good coaches, and they're still good coaches. Good for them. Yes, they do. All right, thanks for bringing it up, Mark. Yeah. Let's move on to this week's games. And first of all, you're going to talk about Wayne Trace yeah. and Crestview. Wayne Trace, Crestview. 1-1, one one, Wayne Trace. Crestview's 2-0. and Wayne Trace out of the GMC lost to Patrick Henry 35-13. Crestview out of the Northwest Conference beat Hicksville 34-21. They were up 28-0. Let Hicksville get back into a little bit. Battle of the Neighbors, this will be fun. I mean, they're right next door. Yep. This is a, a rivalry kind of thing, even though in, they're in different leagues. This is a great way to, to get the season going before they get into league play in a heavy way. Should be a good one. What's Wayne Trace's nickname? Yeah, I know, the Raiders. And that's why I said it so slowly. <laughs> And when we do them in basketball and you yeah. can't talk so slow, I struggle. Yeah, there we go. The Wayne, Wayne Trace, Trace Waiters. Waiters. Yeah, okay. Daffy That's a good Duff. game. Look forward to that. It is a backyard game. And, of course, going into conference play for both schools a week from now, yeah. big tune-up game. Uh, for me, this week, we're going to look at MAC action, Marion Local, and, uh, and Coldwater play this weekend. Wow. Huge game. Obviously, maybe two of the best teams in the MAC in an opening weekend uh, for them. Both teams 2-0. and uh, Cobar wins over Kenton 58-39 and Jefferson, of course, 20-6. Uh, Marion Locos defeated Chaminade Julianne 34-14 and, of course, McComb 36-0. Both are led by quarterbacks Dylan Toby for Coldwater, six touchdown runs, four touchdown passes. Uh, Dwayne Lawyers, uh, six touchdown runs, two touchdown passes. Coldwater's given up like 48 yards per game rush. Uh, excuse me, Marion Locos yeah. giving up like 48 yards per game rushing defense. They're, they're averaging almost, uh, what, 797 yards total in the two games, rushing the football. Wow. It's a dominant performance. It's a great game. A year ago, of course, uh, Coldwater won this game on a last-second field goal from 43 yards by Kyle McKibben. Great ending the game. I did that game with, with Patrick uh, Kamler last weekend. Great game. Coldwater has won 25 games in a row. Their last, last loss was to? Marion Local. Marion Local. And Marion Local has won 31 games in a row at home. Booster Field, great. Uh, I just event. want to know what the 50 50 is going to be. There you go. It was 11,000 plus <laughs> last year. And if I'm winning the 50 50, <laughs> I'm not watching the second half. Me and the cop are heading for the bank. That'll be so a great one. It will be a great game. Lipsick and Liberty Benton, both one and one. Lipsick lost to Grove, 27 to 13. LB beat Archbold, who's a, typically a pretty good program, 45 21. This is an important BVC battle. Two of the three teams, along with Macomb, that we think might battle it out for that league championship. So early on, week three, somebody's going to have a league loss. That should be a really good game. It is. And, of course, they play uh, eight conference games with, with their schools. And someday we need to take a look at who doesn't play who, mm -hmm. you know, in the BVC because yeah. there are 12 teams now. They play That'll eight games. Yeah. That's going to play a factor in mm -hmm. who wins this thing. And as they get their conference season going along, we'll kind of look at that too. I want to look at Lima Senior and Springfield this week. And this is a Springfield that used to be south and north, yeah. and now they have combined together, and they're the Springfield Wildcats now. But Springfield, good program. They're a D1 team. They play seven other D1 teams. That's a lot of computer points for the yeah. Spartans should they yeah. get a win here. Uh, they're 1-1. One one. They defeated uh, Kaufman 22-20. They lost to Princeton by seven, 21-28. So it's a very good program. Jaden Walker has run the football, of course, for 415 yards in the Spartans' first two games. He's obviously the key, and of course that line. Last week, though, they had three turnovers against Harding. That, that's a negative Spartans need to clean up there. Mm -hmm. And then finally, if you're looking to see a Spartan home game, this is it for a while, because after this game, they go on the road to Whitmer, to Ross, and to Toledo St. Francis. Three conference games on the road coming up after this. They're not home again until week seven, when they play Finley on October 7th. So uh, some, some big games for the Spartans coming up on the road. They need this one. A lot of computer points and playing well going into the track. Chance to go 3-0. and Chance to go 3-0, and of course. Uh, for new coach Griffin, that'd be a great start for them. Yep. We're going to put our broadcast schedule up on the on the screen here. We've talked about a couple of these games before already with with Marion Local and, and Coldwater so far. Wayne Trace Crestview, Van Wert and OG this weekend. I saw OG last weekend. Really impressed by their quarterback Kaufman. Big strong kid, throws it pretty well. Van Wert struggled a little bit coming out of the shoot yep. for Coach Recker over there. And then of course uh, Indian Lake and USV. That's where we'll be. Yep. A year ago we saw Indian Lake in their very first playoff game. 
when they played OG, and kind of wish it was there because maybe of, they can bring those ribeye yeah, sandwiches. Those ribeye well. sandwiches were outstanding in the lake last year. Big non-conference game again. Both schools will get into league play the week after that. And uh, Will Mark and I had that game, of course, that airs on Saturday night at 7 p.m. That's our broadcast schedule this week. A lot of big games coming up, of course. The um, Western Buckeye League already has started league play. Uh, this week we get the BBC and the MAC get started. Everybody else gets started it's the week fun after from here that. On out. And it gets fun from here on out. Well, that's our third edition of A Closer Look. For Mark Miller, this is Mark Shine saying good night, everyone.